Good morning, Fred friends. Got a beautiful guitar in today, but before we move on to what we've got, my new business cards just arrived, um, and you'll see I've updated my um, website address, which is now moved to fretfriend.co.uk. I've also put my um, Facebook page down on there, which is ng17 forward slash, it's not ng17, it is facebook.com forward slash ng17 or facebook.com forward slash n-g-o-n-e-s-e-v-e-n. So better information on there. New cards just come today. My new website will be being or will be going at fretfriend.co.uk. I've bought that domain for five years. I own it for five years and I will have first refusal on buying it again. Um, the reason I bought five years over ten is buying it for five years was less than half price of ten years, so I saved money doing that. Maybe it'll cost me in the long run, but let's worry about um, expenses further down the line when they come. Um, absolutely fantastic. So on to the guitar we're having today. And this is a guitar I first saw at church, at Ashwood Church, where we started going to, I believe, five or so months ago, uh, four or five months ago. Fantastic little church. Uh, ticks all the boxes for Michelle and myself. Uh, we absolutely love it there. And the worship leader there, Paul Bell, plays a wonderful Telecaster, Telecaster Blues Deluxe, some type of, uh, he told me what it was, and I've, I've kind of forgot already. It's a Mexican-made Telecaster, but it's different to what you normally see. And I'm going to show you why. And I'm going to show you that. And there you go. How is that for a Telecaster with three pickups? You think, hmm, different. Yeah, well, it's more than different because this has actually got four pickups. Or nine, depending on which way you want to look at it. Under each saddle, which these look expensive saddles, don't they, is a piezo pickup for each saddle. And your normal controls for a guitar, you've got your five way, like on a strap, you've got a strap pickup in there, which has got the staggered poles, which I've never quite understood them. Me and Paul had a quick talk about those, and we never quite understand why they do that, but they do. All the controls for these three pickups are here. Tone, volume, or whichever way it goes around. And you've got your five ways, so it gives you your individual pickups plus your splits. It would be nice to get that, just these two pickups together. It's something we can look at in the future. But this is coming just for a check over and a setup. Your piezo pickup, by the way, volume is on here. I don't, there won't be a tone for that, just a volume. But this is coming just for basically a check over. Paul also said that He's getting a little bit of a, uh, a nasal twang from these. They're sounding a bit microphonic, or he thinks they're sounding a bit microphonic. So we're gonna look into that. Um, but it's also, I've checked over the frets. I've been across with fret rocker. The neck is not absolutely straight. We've got a little bit of relief in there, so it's not giving me an exact true reading, but there are at least four high frets. So we are going for the, the intensive setup over um, the player setup. Player setup being the £50 version. I should just show you where we are with that, you see. Mexico, blah, 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 blah. The 50 quid version, the player setup, is everything basically stripped down and rebuild. We don't take everything off, but what we do is we do everything bar the electrics and bar fret work. Uh, when you need electrics looking at and sorting and you need fret work, up to five frets, that you need the intensive setup. The intensive setup is basically it is a complete strip and rebuild um, but in both setups with with the player setup don't think a player setups any less than an intensive setup uh, I'll explain why everything gets done we take the strings off we take we test the tuners check the tuners uh, we check all the saddles we re-radius the saddles um, we level we don't level frets we polish the frets we clean up the fingerboard we will attack it with some um, good mineral oil, which is called lemon oil, but it's not lemon oil. Lemon oil would rip your guitar to pieces. It's actually mineral oil with a hint of lemon in there. It's specially formulated this stuff to treat wood, to clean. And what we do is we give it a spray to lift all the gunk out and we'll wipe it off and it also treats the wood. You need to do this once, they say once a year, but I think once every six months would be fantastic if you're a regular player and play a lot. Now this particular guitar is Paul's main guitar. Um, it's what he uses at worship, at church. Um, so, we need to get this right. Not that we're not going to get it. I don't get a guitar and I think I'll only do that off right. We don't work like that. Uh, praise the Lord. So, 
We have Fishman pickups under each saddle, which I don't know a lot about. It's a new thing for me. I've not seen or experienced these before. But back to the guitar. What's well, at least four frets leveling. I'm going to level whatever frets need doing, recrown and polish them. We'll treat the neck. We'll clean it all up. Get some uh, penetrating mineral oil in there. I shall check and cut the nut where applicable. I will have the tuners loosened and tightened again. Uh, we'll make sure they're all working all right. Make sure the screws are all right. We'll set the neck, set the truss rod, because there's too much relief in here. I would also say the strings are slightly too high over the first fret. Uh, I can show you that. Too high over here. We need to drop that down to about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 of a millimetre. Um, so just under half a millimetre there, probably a third of a millimetre on the higher frets, uh, on the, or on the higher strings. And we'll get the guitar perfectly set up, perfectly cleaned up, perfectly playing. Um, good thing about church, I always do a reduction for church, I always have. Uh, also the very first job I ever worked on was, was for, a, for a lady at church at, um, when we were in Blidworth and I, she had a ovation type guitar bolt back and uh, the body come when I glued it on. So my first ever work was for the church, first jobs. Uh, but I always take off 33% for the church, a lot of it, there was a couple of implications of why it's 33%, just think of Jesus and how long he was here on earth and there you go. Um, so yeah, that's all spot on. So I'm going to crack on with this. I will do this today. Could be having new strings on there. We'll go with some good old Diodario tens. Which normally you'd think nines on a telly, but Paul likes tens, so we're going to go with tens. Uh, a ten forty six set. I also noticed the action. Personally, for me, looks a little bit high above the twelve fret. Um, but that's probably because I know he's getting some fret buzz around here. So we need to sort that one out. Uh, get that fixed. So that's it. I'm going to crack on with that sometime today. Uh, I've told him he can have it back tomorrow. Um, and let's get it all playing as it should, basically. Get a good setup on there and um, it'll all be good. I will come back later and give you an update. Welcome back. I've been through the configuration of this guitar and checked the pickups. And it does appear that the bridge pickup is a little bit microphonic. Um, but probably not as much, I don't know if it's a lot to worry about or, or what, I've got an absolutely clean sound at the moment and just on that pickup it's just giving that little bit of reverb effect which which is is microphonacy, I've just invented a word. Um, I'm going to show you, I'm going to move the camera down just a little bit, you have to ignore the washing machine out in the back room there um, to see what you think, but I think it's a little bit microphonic. Now Paul, we did talk about swapping these pickups out but it's something we're going to do later. We could easily avoid using this pickup for now. I don't think, it is a little bit microphonic, but it's not that bad, but let, let's see what you think. Let me just, and I'm gonna show you the configuration of the guitar anyway, because uh, I've worked out how, how all the controls work. So I'm just gonna go down. I'm not aiming this on my uh, midriff, I am aiming it on the guitar. So, here's the guitar, and I think you can see it there. Now let me just zoom in and give you an idea. That's close enough, I think. So we are on just this pickup. Uh, tones on full, volumes on four. I'll turn the piezo off. We'll turn the volume down. If we turn the volume down there. That's no, no volume on anything. That's a piezo. Turn that completely off. And this volume works for all of these three pickups, and this tone works for all of these three pickups. The tone, there's not a lot of variation in that tone. I would say I would have changed the pot in there. That's probably a B type pot. I would use an A type. But anyway. So full volume, just this pick up. Yeah, that little bit of reverb. There's no reverb at all on the amp, so we're getting a bit, it is a bit microphonic. Go to this pick, this pick up. Am I just hearing things? Am I hearing a bit of echo on that? Do we want to hear a bit of microphonic so we can go and spend some money and swap the pickups out? It does happen. Um, but the pickup variations, just that pickup, these two, just the middle pickup, which is five times louder than everything else. It's because of the staggered poles on here. I don't know why you can't adjust these poles. That to me is not a good setting. I'd, I'd just 
eradicate that pickle. We could take that pickle out of the wiring situation and, and wire it up to work these two, which would be a great solution for Paul because he likes that. I don't know if he uses a middle pickup on its own. Split again, this one and this one. It is a bit twangy. Just a bridge pickle. And that's the tone. A bit of variation, but not a lot, and volume, which works on all three pickups. So A little bit out of tune playing down there, and there's two reasons for that. One, the action is very high on the 12th fret. I've measured it, and now I understand that. <clears throat> we go a little bit higher because we can use it acoustically on the piezos, but I would not have gone two and a half millimeters high. I'd imagine Paul has compensated for the fret buzz. It's two and a half mil there above the 12th fret. I would like to get that down to two. Chances are it's probably compensated for a bit of fret buzzes getting around here. Once we've leveled these frets and sorted out, we'll, we'll get that eradicated. The radius is also wrong on this bridge. We need to, it's virtually flat. We need to get that arc back in there. Um, so I'll do that first and we'll start looking at the action. I'll set up the action and everything with these strings on for now, just to give you an idea of where we need to be. Then I can remove the strings, we can set the neck, we can level the frets and uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> Chances are I get a bit of echo from this amp because it's a small amp, it's facing me, small 10 watt Yamaha amp. I know I've got no reverb set on there, but it could just be the settings in this room. But if Paul's saying it sounds microphonic, chances are it is a little bit microphonic. So um, I'll see what you lot say. Get back to me on this video, leave your comments. And because um, it's something we're going to leave these pickups in for now, changing the pickups is something we're going to look at later. I've also considered re gaussing or re gaussing this pickup or these pickups. But to do that, we need the exact same magnet that's inside there. Um, but if Paul's looking at changing pickups, anyway, we can go and look at some something on Iron Gear. I, want, I can also talk to my friend Lee Bosworth, who we were talking about pickups yesterday. And he told me some really, really awesome pickups that sound better cheap on a vintage guitar, vintage brand, John Ombiscuse, that sound better than his £1,000 custom telly or whatever he's got. So go and talk to him. I'll make some inquiries and we'll see what we can do. But I'm considering... Swapping these two out for a, um, a Telecaster set from, um, from Iron Gear. So we'll see what we've got. Anyway, I'm going to cut this video here right now. I'm going to get, go and crack on, do the things I said I'm going to do. Set the intonation, set the radius, get everything set up as I'd like it, and then see what fretboards we get in, and we can get the strings off. And you're back in the room. Right then. Um, Added bonus, I went online and tried to find out something about this Fender Fishman Power Bridge. Um, and I did find something out about the Power Bridge. So I've learned how all the controls work. I've also, praise the Lord, I've found a diagram. Which has not just got, it's got all the information. It's even got a detailed wiring diagram. What wire goes where and blah, 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 blah. Absolute bonus for me because I'm... Not one of these who can look at some electrics and think that needs to do there, and I more or less look at it and think, right, multicoloured spaghetti. You know, they're not my thing. But there, in detail, every single part of the wiring process and, don't know what it is, some stuff. So that's an absolute bonus. So it means we're not going to have any problems with this. Now, what I've decided I'm going to do is, because it's the first time uh, Paul's, it's the first time Paul's been here or bought anything to me, and I've not done a detailed setup for quite a while on a video, and uh, it's not fair to keep saying, oh, I'll trawl back through my old videos and have a look, because I've got 300 videos online. So I am going to show you what a, um, a complete setup more or less entails. So I'm going to turn the camera on the guitar, and I'm going to explain a couple of things, because I'm going to do the setup with the old strings on that. Now, people say you shouldn't do that. I don't know why. Because I see it like this, you do the setup with the old strings on, right? You get the intonation set, get the radius set of the strings. Your radius is, your neck's going to arc it, that's called the radius. And I know for a fact on a Strat or a Tele, it's going to be round about, if it's not a vintage one, which will be seven and a quarter inch radius, it'll be nine and a half, and it is nine and a half. And what we do is we don't, we set the string radius to that on the bridge and on the nut. So wherever you go along the neck, 
you've got that continuous uniform arc of straight the strings are arcs. So I'm going to show how we do that and I'm going to turn the camera on to the guitar right now. I'm going to turn my volume off my phone so it doesn't interrupt us and um, you can show, I'll show you how we go on with the set all. Oh, brilliant. Oh, that actually was Paul Bell. I told him I've got a wiring diagram. He says, brilliant. Glad that makes sense to you. Well, skip back 40 seconds, Paul, and you'll see it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but it does help. Right, so there you go. I'm going to turn the camera on the guitar because it's nice for a customer to get an in-depth, to get some idea of how this all works. I'm not going to straighten the guitar or anything. I am just going to set that there like so. And we're going to, that's how we're going to work. That's how we're going to work it, kids. Cool cats. So, I already decided the action on the strings was too high above the 12th fret. I wanted to drop it down by half a millimetre. And what I've done is I've set the outside saddles. So we're 1.75, but from the top of the fret to the bottom of the string, we always radius from the bottom, from underneath, because strings are thicker. If you did it from the top, this would be too close to the fingerboard. So we always radius from underneath. And what we use is what we call, it's a radius gauge. And that's a nine and a half inch radius and what we do with that is we place it under the strings and first we'll check that the neck, this arc, fits the neck and it does absolutely perfectly proving that we have a nine and a half inch radius then what we need to do is we need to go and set these two strings on the outside to where they need to be in this case 1.75 mil and 2 mil above the 12th fret and we'll set everything else high and what we do is then, now you're not allowed to see it from there but I will get my uh, contraction I'll get my control and what I'll do is I'll zoom in slightly and they and I think can you see there no you cannot see there's no point zooming in you can't see it believe me right this radius now which is in line with the arc of the fingerboard is now just touching the both outside strings these strings are all high and what we do is we take the correct size allen key and what we're going to do is we're going to lower each saddle until each string is touching this radius gauge and once it is we will then have let's take this out of the way we will have that correct arc on all strings that's how we set the action at the bridge i'll also then move the saddles forwards or backwards uh, until we get the correct intonation at the 12th fret it means all strings will be in tune perfectly all across the whole fingerboard quite a long-winded uh, if you don't understand what i'm saying you're not going to understand that you're not going to I'm still not going to explain it in a way that you're going to be able to understand it anyway. Go and Google intonation on a guitar and read up about it because it's quite a long-winded process. But once you get the grasp, once you grasp it, you'll get to know what it is. If your guitar ever goes out of tune anywhere, chances are, I'll explain it. What we call the string, the scale length of a guitar is a distance from the nut to the bridge or the saddles in particular. This being a Fender, we have a 25 and a, half, 25 and a half inch scale length, which means from there to there is 25 and a half inch. And right in the centre is the 12th fret, which should measure, if it's 25 and a half, it'll be 12 and a half plus a quarter. So it's 12 and three quarter inches. I absolutely guarantee that that is the case right there. Now what we do is, when we play an open string, an E, that might be an E, it might not. I don't think it's in tune. The harmonic should play the same note which fortunately there it does and then you should finger the fret of a 12 that's also an E so that is the intonation on that is correct meaning the scale length is correct now sometimes even though we need to be 25 and a half inches from there to there it's not always the case exactly because this makes a difference the thickness of the string and now what kind of wind it's got on it so sometimes we may be sharp or flat when we finger the note That sounds a little bit sharp to me. And what we do is, if it is sharp, we move the saddle away and make the string a bit scale length longer. If it's flat, we move the saddle that way. But the way I always remember this is, if you notice sharp, the harmonic and the open string and the harmonic will always be right. It's always about this fingered fret on the 12th fret. Now, the easy way to remember whether your saddle goes left or right is, if the note is flat, four letters, we move it, as we look at it, left, which is four letters. If the note here is sharp, five letters, 
we move the saddle to the right, which is also five letters. It's the way I've always remembered it. So I'm going to go and set the intonation there. Um, I've already shown you how to do the radius. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do it off camera. In fact, I'm not going to do it off camera. I'm going to do it right here, right now, because you'll get a better understanding of what I mean. So we're in. We've got the string gauge beneath. We know we've got this string right and this string right. Everything else is high. So what we do is we're going to lower each individual saddle until it just rests on the string gauge. And we try and rest them evenly. We, do, we want these, we don't want a big arc like a rainbow shape. We need these more or less flat on each string. People normally set these wrong. And we set it like a like a proper arc, like a rainbow. It's not the right way to do it. And what I do, but we can leave a little arc in there. So I'm going to, some of these screws are a bit knackered, which is not good. Maybe my Allen key is just a bit too small. Right, there you go. So we've got the two outside ones. Just got two middle ones to do now. And you can do it like I'm doing it now. I'm going to get it where it needs to be and then I'll eyeball each individual saddle. And I'll shape it to the arc, just tidy it up. But the strings are exactly where they need to be there. So if I'm getting fret balls now, I need to, I'll need to be going and altering frets. Make fun of this, it's going to be, oh, that's one stuck as well. So we've got some stuck saddles. If I bend this Allen key, it's going to bite, which it has done. So there you go. So I've got each of those strings now all resting on this arc there, which means we've got the radius absolutely set right. Now what I do is I'll just eyeball it, just make sure it's nice. That one seems a little bit high. What I'll do is I'll just tidy this up just a little. I need to bring that a little bit higher. That's nice. Bring that a little bit higher, take this one a little bit lower. And that to me is very pleasing to the eye. We've now set the radius on the bridge, which means this arc matches the arc of the, of the fingerboard of the neck itself that way. Right, really happy with that. Now I'm going to go and set the intonation doing what I said. So I'm going to get up and get a guitar tuner, get it set up, and I will come back and show you how to do that. Right, so I've checked the intonation and we're right across the highest five strings, um, A, D, G, B, E. The, this one's a tiny bit flat, the A string, the E string's a little bit flat. So I'm going to show you how we adjust that. And there's the open E. I sound a little sharp on your computer because when you lay a guitar down it goes a little bit sharper. When you get in the playing position it evens out. Harmonic. Perfect, and then we finger the 12th fret. It's a little bit flat, meaning four letters flat, we need to move the saddle to the left. So towards that's towards the neck. So I'm gonna get my super long screwdriver, which I use for such a thing. And I am gonna give this a good couple of turns and turn it back one. And I'm gonna tune the string back in. Still flat. That's not bang on. There's the E note. Tiny bit sharp. Perfect. And that's it. Tuned in perfectly. So we have the intonation. Just go, just check again. Beautiful. Now, Paul did say on this string we get a little bit of that sitar effect. And I can hear it. That's normally because the nut slot is not cut right. So we're going to clean up that nut slot and we're going to recut it. And we'll get rid of that sitar like sound. So we've done, we've set the radius on the bridge, on the saddles to match the radius on the fingerboard or on the neck. 
we've set the intonation on each string so now we'll have no tuning problems we're going to stay in perfect tune all the way across the length now it is safe for me to remove the strings and once that's done we'll level the neck we'll get it straight we'll check it we're not straight edge once we've got that we'll go across with a fret rocker and we'll test it three frets at a time and if we get a rock we know the middle one is high like that one so I know I already know I've got five or six four or five frets to do on this in fact I know there's six set maybe seven uh, once that's off we can decide what we're going to do I'm not going to charge him for a fret level I'm just going to include it in an intensive setup because it's church anyway so uh, we'll get that all, all done right uh, I'd imagine there's going to be five or six frets need some work but they're not going to need a great deal of work so uh, you know we always like to do a favour on a first run get them hooked and once they're hooked get them in full price next time that's the way it works um, so I'm going to crack on with that now um, just before I do do that I'm going to check the volume across all pickups and I'll plug this into the amp again I know for a fact that that middle pickup is louder than the uh, neck pickup or bridge pickup so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower this into the body that little bit more this is all because these pole pieces are staggered because it's a strap pickup I've been looking I've been watching some videos on this um, so it gives it more obviously gives it a lot more options and everything but I don't personally like these staggered poles because to me they're too close to the strings it makes these strings louder than the outside ones in, all in all then that pickup becomes louder than these two pickups so what we normally do in that case is we'll lower the pickup into the body a little bit just to drop the volume and I'm going to do that right here right now you see it all live live TV kids come on live TV when you used to just watch it as kids we used to watch ATV news and all that stuff and something always went wrong when they went live they were amazing so I'm going to go live right now, so watch something go wrong, maybe the amp will blow up, who knows. Well it won't because uh, we have a bubble of protection over us being Christians, so uh, yeah, you know how that works. So there you go. I'm going to turn off the piezo, which we have done. That's the middle pickle. There you go. Neck pickle. Middle pickle. Bit quiet now, bridge pick up. So I've dropped that in a little bit too much, which is fantastic news because it means the theory works. So we'll just bring that back up a little and tell you what, beautiful. We'll just go a little bit more, a little bit more. And I think we'll be set there. Middle pick up, bridge pick up, neck pick up. Go in the middle. I go between these two pick ups. Absolutely beautiful, really happy with that. So that's that, we're all set. Now we've got the intonation done. Uh, we've got the radius done, we've got the string height done above the 12th fret the next thing we need to do is just cut these slots I'm going to do that when I've got my new strings on so what we're going to do next is we're going to remove all these strings we're going to chuck them in the bin I'm going to get the neck set straight and then we're going to go across we're going to skim across these frets get them all leveled off get, it, get the neck fingerboard clean get everything polished up so absolutely wonderful um, stay tuned I'll come back and show you how we do that in a few minutes and here we are, and just before I move on with this Nashville Telecaster blah de blah blah, I forgot the name, whatever it is, I'm just going to show you something. I nipped over to um, Beaver Guitars yesterday, Belvoir Guitars, see my friend Clive Eat Mr. Eastwood out there, and he had a poster for me, and here it is. And there you go, very nice indeed, Beaver Guitars. So that's brightened the room up a bit, I want some more for the other walls now. And um, he's going to have some more posters done next year, and my wife is going to be the model, um, which is exciting. So I just wanted to get that out there. So where are we with this guitar? Well, like I said, I did the setup. We're now onto the uh, nitty gritty end of where we need to be, and there's a little bit of grime on that neck in there, and I've got to get that off. And that is, I'll tell you what that is. That is sweat and muck from fingers that accumulates 
And so we're going to get that off. I'm not going to get my fingers on there, mucky maulers, and start scraping about with my nails and getting that under my nails because it's not pleasant. But what we do is mineral oil. We call it lemon oil in the business. You sell it as lemon oil, lemon oil. It's basically mineral oil, specially formulated for rosewood and well, guitar necks for rosewood and ebony. Um, and what it, this does is it does two things. Not only does it clean it, also nourishes the wood. But cleaning, what it does is this will soak into the wood, and all that crap will lift up. And I can then scrape it off, um, you know. And once that's done, we'll get another coat of this on, and we'll give it some wire wool, and we'll wire wool some of the frets, and that will treat the neck, and it'll be good for another year. I do recommend though that we give it a lemon oil treatment every six months. So when you change your strings, I put a few ones a bit grimy on there. Get yourself some of this gear to spray, or bring it to me, and I'll get to spray for you. And we'll get it cleaned up because it just keeps the wood good. You don't want the wood drying out, becoming brittle, because that's when you fret, you start having problems with your frets, and they start pulling out, and blah 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 blah. Because wood is temperamental and it, it changes according to the weather. So, another tip for you there. So, what we're going to do now? Well, what I'm going to do first is, I ain't going to do that at the moment. Well, I am. I'm going to get all that crap off here first. All that crud. Nasty, nasty umscow. We're going to get that off. Once that's done, I'm going to remove the neck from the guitar to do that anyway. Once I've got the neck removed, I shall have a tweak on the truss rod so we've got the neck absolutely straight. Now, it, chances are, a neck normally falls straight once we take the strings off because you haven't got them strings pulling up. So once that tension's gone, the neck seems to settle back down. It's probably going to be level anyway. Once that's done, we're going to go across with the uh, frot, fret rocker, the frot wrecker, fret rocker, precision ground one there. It's a good straight one, proper. And we'll check what frets need work. And um, I shall level the frets using various my files and stuff. I'll show a little bit of that when I get to it. But rather than just blab on there. I've got a lot to do today. Before I even commence this, I've got one walk the dog and I've got a nip up to the tip. That's going to take me an hour. So I'm going to go and get that done. I'm going to come back and I'm going to crack on with the work. I'll come back with another update again very soon. So, I've cleaned the fingerboard, uh, treated the fingerboard, got all the crud off, uh, let the mineral oils all soak in. And I've gone across and went to remove the, the main or the gist of it, we use some steel wool. You can see all the grime and the crud and the muck in there. It's a little bit dirty, it's not very pleasant. I wouldn't go dobbing my tongue on it or anything like that. Um, and I'm just going to show now, I've got five frets to level. I've been across with the fret level or well, a notched straight edge. That's the fender side, 25 and a half inch scale, straight, uh, scale on the strings there, or scale length, should I say. Um, but we're absolutely straight, been across with a fret rocker, but a bit oh exactly five frets that need attention. So that would have been covered, that is covered anyway in the intensive setup. And I'm going to show you, I've also cleaned up the nut and I've cleaned up the bridge area. There's a lot of dust around here. Normally I'd get a rag under there and go underneath, but because we've got the individual saddle pickups, we can't do that. So I've been in there with a cotton bud, clean out all that area, we gave it a good clean, clean all the pickups. I've also gone in and removed all that grime from a nut. Um, I've also recut the slots on the nut. I don't know how much you can see there. You might have to zoom in a little. Those slots are super clean now. I go in with I have a set of Hosco files, which I use for actually cutting a nut. They don't cut a straight line. They cut an actual. They cut the arc um, or the groove or the slot for the string according to the size of the string. Like, and these are absolutely perfect for this guitar because. This is a 1046 set, so each file has two sizes. You've got 1746 on the orange one, you've got 1336 on the blue, and you've got 1026 on the red. Uh, 10 being at the top, 26 at the bottom, and they cut exactly to the string gauge, which are brilliant. These are worth every penny of a 75 quid they cost me. Uh, so I've recut the nut. I might have to do a little bit more tampering with that nut to get it right, because the strings were a little bit high on there. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go across, I'm going to level these five frets. And normally what I'd do is, I'd tape all these frets up with masking tape. Uh, oh, well, I don't want to tape the frets, I'd tape the fretboard up, uh, so but only the frets are exposed, like so. And you'll see on there, some of them have red marker, and the ones with red marker are the ones that need the attention. They're a little bit high. So because they're a little bit high, we're going to take off the top until we're the same level as the frets around them. It's called fret level leveling. And we need every fret to be level with each other from the first to the last. Um, and once we've got them level, there's no rock. Uh, then we'll because we're flattened, and we need to get that crown back in them. So we'll recrown them as well. And once that's done, we'll polish them all. A couple of uh, quicker ways I'm going to do this today. Normally, like I say, I tape up the whole fingerboard and do a lot like so. Because there's only five, I'm going to work with. 
just two strips of tape, moving the tape along to whichever fret I need to use, just so we don't score into the fingerboard itself, into the wood. And I am going to do a quick recline. Instead of using the 3 edge file, I'll show you this because I'm going to actually now, I'm going to um, turn the camera onto the guitar and it'll give you a much better idea of what I'm talking about. And you can see it in action, can't you? So if we just go, there you go, you don't need to see any more than that. That's perfect for where we are right now. Beautiful. And we have five frets that are rocking. One, two, three, four, five. To show you, I mean, you're not going to see it, you've got to take my word for it. You're going to have to trust that I'm a good Christian and I don't tell lies, uh, which I don't, I don't tell lies. But the neck is nice and straight, got the level bar on there. Take my word for it, my neck is straight. So what we do is we go across with what we call, this is a fret rocker. And you'll see we have four sides to this and there are four different lengths. One across the bottom, one there, one there, one there. And what we need to do each time is go across three frets at a time. And if we get a rock, you'll hear it. If we get a rock, you haven't got a rock there, but here, listen. It means the middle one, because we only do three at a time, it means the centre one is high. Because it's high, I mark it with a red marker and I check but it's all the way across, and it's high all the way across. Next one's fine, next one's high. But it's only high to there, here it's fine, and here it's fine. So I only mark from there to there, because that's the bit I need to file between the fingers here. Same again, this one's fine, this one's high. All the way along, you get how it works. The rest, well that's a little bit high. You didn't mark that one, obviously missed that one out. That's a little bit high from, from about there. So we've got six frets, no big deal. Good thing about it is I'm gonna do them all on camera, so if I have missed any, you're gonna see me see, see me making a fool of myself live on the, on YouTube, well not live, but and the rest of them are all level. Take my word for it, apart from the other two down this end, which I've marked off. Now this one I know is uneven here. Until we get to here. And it's fine, it's fine there. The rest of them are fine. Until we get to the second to the end. So we have six six frets to do there. It's all fine, it's all fine, it's all fine. Then the last one we can measure is this one. And on this corner here. And that's just ever so slightly rocking. You might be thinking, well, what about the last one there and the first one there? Well, if they're out, well, what we do is I do this by eye and I make sure with my eye that I know that these are absolutely right because these are the two that you use as your guide and everything in between these two will be level according to these two, the first and the last, all the way across the length of the neck. So what I normally do is I'll take a 9.5 inch radius gauge, which is here, can you see that nine and a half inch stamped on there? And I will check that this fret is straight and true according to that radius gauge. And that is absolutely wonderful. And then we'll go and check this one. And also that is. So I'm happy that these two are true to the radius of the arc or the radius of the fingerboard itself, fingerboard being the neck. And it all, it's all absolutely wonderful. As long as these two are in right, seated correctly, and the level, we can level everything between these two using these two as the guides. If I really wanted to, I could take a leveling beam and I could sand with a leveling beam all the way across until we started removing stuff there and there and we know we're all flat in between. But because I trust my um, vision and my skill, praise the Lord, um, I'm going to do this easy way today, it's easy for me. And what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to take a couple of ways I can do this. I can take a fret guard, if I can find one. You see, I've not prepped anything, I've just come in and thought I'll just crack on with it. Here we go, I know the DNA somewhere. I could take the fret guards, makes the job a lot easier. I'm going to leave the camera running, I'm going to babble on, as you do. They bubbled on in Babylon, you know. It's part of the problem. It's all good. Right, so, fret guard. So I could, if I really wanted to, put the fret guard over the top of the fret and file it that way. I'm not going to do that, that one's too thin. 
this is the correct one and I could do it like so, like that that make my job a little bit easier and all I'm going to do then is take my number 3 file, Swiss file number 3 cut I shall bring all the files I'm going to use number 3 has... this hasn't disappeared, it's every... I have various files I'm going to use for this job got my regular number 3 flat file uh, Swiss made, very nice, and very sharp, and this is the one I'd normally use for levelling. And all I'm going to do is just go across with some strokes, and I'll feel, I can feel the arc. Just a few simple strokes, and we'll just check that we're level. And we're, we're just about good there. Just a little bit high in the middle, a little bit high on the edge. I've got a finer three edge file that I use for crowning, I'll show the crowning later this is a better cut, this is going to give me such a smooth finish and I know you can't see because my mucky maulers are in the way but you know I'm lucky and I'm just going to go across the top with this because I'm also going to bevel as I go across and I'll remove that as you do and I'll just check again for level still a little bit high fine everywhere else, I now know I only need to work on this area I'm not going to use that guard because I don't need to always remember it to clean the file because we're taking little particles off and the particles get stuck in there and if we leave them in we're going to cut we're going to put scrapes and scratches in that fret so I'm going to go now I know I've got a steady enough hand to just do this with a file without using a guard so that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to slightly angle as I go over and I'm going to feel feels good and I'm going to keep checking it's all about taking your time, that's beautiful there tiny bit of a rock on this edge, so again clean the file feels good to me, just feels nice, you know when it's right I would say that's done. And that's it, that file is now level. Now that's not the finish of the job. And I'm not going to zoom in, but that is not the finish of the job because now we've flattened that. And you'll see if I put some pen across it there. We've flattened it. What we need to do now is, now it's flat. Is I need to cut into this, it's flat now, I need to put that arc back on the fret, what we call the crown. There's a few ways I could do this, I could use this file which is great it's also got smooth edges so you're not going to cut into the guitar and I would normally go and do that but I prefer to use my three edge file to do this and the good thing about it, I've got two of these files one's a coarse cut one's a fine cut good thing about this is I'm going to go vertical this edge and as I go across I'm going to roll over and that's going to give me the arc the good thing about this is these edges are ground flat so there's no cut on there, so I can't dig into the guitar. So I don't need to use a guard, I can just go across. And from where your angle is, I'm going to lean it away from you. And I'm just going to go in, and I'm just going to angle it over, and I'm going to put that arc back in to the fret. And I'm going to go to this file first. You see how I'm turning it toward you now. putting a thin line down the centre and that is now where the, where the fret is flat we're now putting that arc back in there and once I've used this file I've got pretty close I'm going to use my fine file to finish it off again ground edges ground edges so we can't cut into the guitar and again is this one of these things that comes you know, well, you're a natural at it like I am uh, praise the Lord or you learn it over time and it's just you get you feel it that's what you do and that's it and that's now I've crowned that fret it's finished let me show you now there's a thin line down the center of that fret there you see it no you can't you might see it now just above my thumb the only part of the string that's going to touch that fret now is where that line is and that's what we want, minimal contact so we don't get a ring or a buzz. So that one's done and then what I'll do is I'll go across with this file. And I'll just go a couple of strokes just to remove any burrs. 
that's a three mil side and this is a two and a half mil and I'm going to always clean in file I'm going to finish off with this one that fret is now finished I'll get some more mineral oil on there in a bit and we'll clean everything up that fret is done we're now going to check it for level we're not finished yet don't get excited that fret is now level all the way across so we won't get any fret buzz there but it's not polished to polish we will go back and i'll do this when i do all of the frets because what we'll do is we'll have that fret guard on the, the fingerboard guard on there and all we do is with that guard on there we take some steel wool we're going to go across and we're going to polish the fret and that's going to clean everything up it's going to bring a shine and any scratches that are in there it's going to remove and this fret will end up smooth and crowded. I'm going to show it you just this one fret. And that's how we do it. And that is what I'm going to be. I've got one, two, three, four, five more to do. That one's finished. And I'm going to show it you now. I'm going to turn the guitar upside down to do so. Fret number four. This is the one we've done. One, two, three, four. There you go. You see that's a lot more polished than these. It's beautifully crowned. Nice and round on the top now, that one's done. I've got four more to do. I'm going to crack on with that. I'm then going to polish all of the frets. I'm going to get some strings on and then I'm going to come back. And here we are all ready for the strings. I think you'll agree that that neck and fingerboard looks a lot, lot better now. Frets have been leveled, crowned and polished. That wasn't part of the job, it's just just part of the setup, the intensive setup you get up to five frets. Well I've actually done six but six frets leveled, recrowned, all of the frets polished. Fingerboard's been treated a couple of times, been cleaned and treated. Uh, we are now ready for a new set of strings. We've cleaned up everything, I've recut the nut. I may have to just tweak those slots just a little when I've got the strings back on. I've tightened obviously tightened all the screws. On the uh, tuners, we've cleaned up all of the bridge area. Um, we've set the radius on the saddles. Be very careful not to damage anything because these are all each one is a piezo. Uh, each one of these is a pickup or an individual string pickup. We've gave it a good clean, cleaned everything up. We've tested the neck bolts and the strap pins, made sure they're all tight. I didn't remove a neck in this case. Normally I would, but I don't think there's going to be any need to do that. Uh, why would you want to do it? I would, if I needed to do more frets up the top end, I would definitely remove a neck and I'd have put it on the jig. Uh, but because I only had I only really had one over the body end, it was so easy to do that with the neck on. I left it as so. I'm now ready to stick on a set of strings. We'll go with Giordano tens, which are the strings Paul uses anyway. I buy these in bulk. Uh, they cost me about 45 some quid delivered. 45 quid. I charge five for a set, making a couple of pence. Per set there, charge five quid for these, then we're going to charge six, seven, eight quid. We could charge seven or eight quid in a shop, aren't they? So, you know, um, so they're going to go on there. New set, um, I'll stretch the strings in, get the guitar tuned up, and we'll see if the nut needs any adjustment. It looks pretty close where it is. I thought the slots were not quite deep enough when I first saw the guitar, uh, but we'll get that sorted out. Hopefully, I've not cut anything too deep because if I have, it means I've got to take a nut out, put another one in, and that's another hour and a half. It's going to take me. Um, but I'm sure it will be okay. So I'll come back and check how we got on um, in the final part of the video, which I will be filming quite soon. Stay tuned. And here we are, all done. And what an absolutely fine looking guitar this is. Came in needing a setup. It's had the intensive setup because it needed fret work. So not only have I recrowned, leveled six frets and recrowned them. Um, I've also polished all the frets and oiled the fingerboard. I've had a complete strip and rebuild. Well, not a complete strip and rebuild, but more as a complete setup. I've done the intonation, set the pickup heights. Uh, like I say, leveled some frets, crammed the frets, uh, polished the frets, cleaned the fingerboard, oiled the fingerboard, tightened the tuners, everything. Tightened the neck screws and the um, strap pins. Absolutely wonderful guitar, beautiful. We might be changing the pickups a bit further down the line. I did also notice there's a bit of wear on some of the pickups. We might want to look again and leveled off, or uh, maybe in a re probably don't need a refret just yet because the frets look quite high. But we could get away with skimming the top of the frets. I've also cut the nut 
cut the nut because the slots in the nuts weren't were a little bit too high and when you're fingering an F chord for instance you were going slightly sharp on this first fret so I've cut in using my Hosco uh, nut slot files beautiful guitar Even sounds beautiful unplugged. What a lovely top, what a superb neck that feels like as well. These by the way, made in Mexico, 10 times better than the Chinese, but do not ever buy a Chinese Fender. I've got one in here I've refretted, it's been an absolute nightmare and I've still not finished it, so it's third refret. But anyway, that's another story. This is for Paul Bell from Church, Ashwell Church, worship leader there, lovely, lovely guy. Um, I'm going to let him know his guitar is ready, I'm going to write him out a receipt and um, all being well he's going to come he's going to be happy and uh, he's going to go away with a big chunky smile on his face so that is another project wrapped up um, I've got other things to be getting on with so until next time my friends be good to each other and I will see you soon